What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sure. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. The name needs a little updating, maybe like magical black people, or I guess that doesn't have the same ring. That's a look at the new Focus Features film, The American Society of Magical Negroes. The social commentary satire from Kobe LeBay stars Justice Smith and David Allen Greer, who portray undercover agents of sorts, dispatched by a secret agency that keeps the peace by making white people more comfortable. The title plays on the writing device known as The Magical Negro, a black character with a simple and spiritual demeanor that swoops in to save the day for justice, and the story is personal. I grew up in a very white society, white community in Orange County, California, and it was a very red county, and I experienced a lot of um, messaging about what my place is in society, and I internalized a lot of that messaging, and I made myself smaller, and I uh, had a lot of shame, and I, after I left that, left Orange County is when I really started to, like, uh, identifying with, you know, m my autonomy and, and defending my identity and, um, yeah, and, and it's the same journey that Aaron goes on in the film, and so I knew I could lend myself to this character and, and I can give that, um, that inner conflict of, like, uh, trying to make myself comfortable is sending me down this rabbit hole of constantly being uncomfortable because I'm I'm experiencing disrespect I'm appeasing in order to mitigate that and then that makes me uncomfortable and also allows them to disrespect me further and I know that I know that cycle I know that cycle um, fortunately I'm out of it which is great <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I just knew that um, I would have loved to see a movie like this at a younger age and so I'm, I'm grateful that um, other people will have this film the director told us he hopes audiences find the film empowering. What, what I get out of it um, is that um, I think that in seeing a black man um, learn to speak up for himself and learn to be bigger and learn to be bolder, um, I find that really moving and I find that really emboldening and it makes me feel bigger and it makes me feel um, prouder and more able to take up space and to, to do that on a journey that's really joyful. Um, <clears throat> it, it makes me feel, you know, bigger and bolder and happier. Hey. Darn it. I was hoping you were... Here to talk about it are Emmanuel Noisette of E-Man's Reviews and Reginald Ponder known as Reggie the Real Critic, R-E-E-L. Welcome, guys. Yay. Yeah, I, I, I'm ready to just dive right in because yeah. you didn't like it and you're kind of like maybe some parts that it didn't really, you know, hit where it should have hit. I, yeah. I thought you did a good job, but go ahead, E. Listen, um... <laughs> Racism in America is a very thick concept. I mean, it's hard enough in terms of talking about black people and issues. Then you have colorism. Then you have being biracial. Then you have, you know, issues of passing. It's a lot to talk about. And one of my critiques of this film is the fact that while it does talk, on, uh, talk about a really, you know, real trope of having a black... Um, magical Negro. It's a real thing. It's a real thing, especially in film and television. Um, it tries to tackle a little bit too many topics uh -huh. at once. And I think it just bites a little bit too much, you know, yeah. that it can't chew at all. You know, the trope Magical Negro, Spike Lee uses it a lot. But did you find that it worked in this? I, I, I think it worked to a degree. I, where, where I agree with Emmanuel is that, that firstly, it probably tried to talk about so much that surrounds it. But when it gets to looking at some of these specific situations in the film, and there, you, we'll, we'll find ourselves laughing at them, but one is a, a police officer who just feels like, oh, I can't do anything in the world because you black people who got privilege and not, the main character swoops in and helps help him out. Mm -hmm. Those things are real. Those things, so I think it hit the mark on many of the situations that it shows there. I, I just think that maybe it, it did bite off a little bit more than it could chew. And then at the end of the thing, it's like getting on a train, knowing that you, you're trying to get to your stop, but does it actually get you to your stop? So this movie didn't get there. I mean, I only saw the trailer, so I'm thinking, because it comes out tomorrow, uh, to, wait, no yesterday, Friday. Um, so I'm thinking more like Get Out, but you say more like American fiction. 
Uh, trying to be American diet fiction. Diet American fiction. Diet. You know, like, it, 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 American fiction sticks the landing. It does what it does because it stays focused on the issue that it's talking about, um, especially in a racial context. This one, like I said, it tries to tackle each one. The main character is biracial. That in itself could be its own movie because it, it's a very serious conversation. So it shouldn't be so many things. What, hit on one thing and go with it? Or, 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 or make sure that you tie them together well. Right. Is that you shouldn't be in the movie trying to figure out that what the director was really trying to do is say that those black folks who are closest to white folks are able to, are, are not able to navigate the world just like those black folks that are not. So this, the fact that he is biracial, all of his friends and his whole environment is white, it was trying to say that even this guy, if this guy can't permeate the society and the system, then what do you think is happening to the rest of us? But I don't think that they, that it, that it hits like that. But mm -hmm. is that true? That black folks have a problem dealing in society? Well, it's, well, yes. I mean, we have the issue with, I mean, the list is so long with police, with medical, you know, issues, school. I mean, we just saw the whole affirmative action thing. Um, the list goes on because it's been going on for hundreds of years. So it's really like, which struggle do you want to talk about? Because every struggle in itself is complicated. But movies like this, doesn't that, don't, you know, making movies like this bring the, the uh, topic to the forefront so we can talk about it? Absolutely, it, yeah. and that's why, mm -hmm. that's why I'm, I got a problem with my man. <laughs> that's why I like what they did with this film, mm -hmm. is that they brought out the issue, they actually tackled, a, tackled it in a way that makes sense. There's just some of the stuff in, in between that makes it where you say, hmm, man, I wish it would have done this, or I wish I would have known this. So I'm gonna push back on that. Okay. The, when we talk about film, film is all about communication. If I'm trying to t deliver a simple message to you, that's going to be the easiest way but for you to get it. But is the simple message, what is a magical Negro? Isn't that the simple that's, message? That's what it wanted to be, but it tried to do more by being a racial commentary. Okay, so what should it have been? What should, so they just should talk about magical Negroes. And what it, is the magical I, I Negro? Think that would have been, I think that would have been more helpful to just talk about the magical Negro dilemma and then stick with maybe the whole fictional satire that they wanted to do, but throwing in the whole rom-com element, yeah. you know, like that's that, where it starts to get a little distracting. that makes it entertaining though, doesn't it? I mean, what is the mm. Magical Negro issue? And how do we deal with it? So, so there's a couple of things here. One is that in society in general, you're thinking, is it my job to make white people comfortable? And that's what this is saying, is that the characters that are in these films are here to make white people feel good. Yeah, you, you could, we were showing some video right now. Remember Beggar Vance? That was yes. another one. Beggar uh, Vance, uh, yeah. uh, Michael Clark Duncan in uh, The Green Mile, oh, yeah, the Green for Mile. example. But the problem that ends up happening, especially when this is on film, is that it depicts black people, it dehumanizes us. It, and we're we... either the negative stereotype that's already out there, or we have to be this extremely hyper exceptional version that caters to whiteness. We cannot have our own story. But does that make desires. us more acceptable? It, it does. Uh, it, it, under that, the white that, gaze. And that's what this movie is trying to say. It, do, yeah. it does make us more acceptable because if we can help white folks feel comfortable, our lives will be a little bit yeah, better. It makes life easier, is right? That, that you won't be as mad with us, so our life will be better. Not that we will thrive because in this one, the love interest, I mean, you might lose your love interest because you are trying to help somebody else yeah. in, in their life. So you'll have some things that you regret, but you won't have, you'll still, in the movie it talks about getting back home. Uh -huh. It's like, you'll still be able to get back home. All right, okay, I, oh, okay. I, I want to talk to you all day, but I can't because okay. we, we got to go. Right. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>